Welcome to Azaz, Ask Zanata Anything About Zoho. This is Volume 1, Issue 6. From Zanata Consulting, I'm Brett Martin, and I am joined by Tyler Colt, Greg Belknap, and ja- Josh Oliver. Uh, and man, we've got a packed show today, so let us get right on into it with the first question. All righty. So this one comes from Steve, Steve Sandor, uh, just a post on Club Zanata, and he asks, now that Bookings has a reasonable integration with Zoom, I'm biting the bullet and trying it out. Uh, he's a Zoho One user, or solo user in Zoho One, uh, and he asks, I'm using Zoho Mail as my primary email client and have set up two aliases. I'd like to send email notifications from Bookings using an alias, but Zoho tells me that this function is not yet available. Is there a workaround? So, yeah, unfortunately, there's... Uh, uh, you can't send emails from a custom email address in Zoho Bookings. It has to be sent from a user. Uh, that means either you will need to create a new user inside of Zoho One uh, to uh, use as an alias uh, in which you would be able to send emails from that user. Otherwise, you would need to change your email address on your Zoho One account, which I doubt you want to do. So. Really, the only option is to uh, either wait for Zoho Bookings to uh, set that feature available, which I don't know how long that's going to take. I wouldn't hold your breath. Um, but you could also easily just add in a user to Zoho One as a alias uh, for sending those emails. Guys, yeah, thoughts? I guess there, there are some benefits, right, Josh, to having that system user anyways, right? Like we have one internally called admin at Zanata.com that we have on uh, in our own Zoho instance so that we can use it to write our functions. So it doesn't look like Josh is updating a deal when some math is done for me, right? It's like, it's done yeah. by the admin. So there are some system benefits sure. for having that user, but yeah, unfortunately, there are just a couple of those odds and ends that still aren't there inside of bookings. Yeah. Yep. And our next question is a finance question. And since uh, we happen to have a finance guru here over at Sonata, we thought we'd just bring him right in through the magic of television to answer your question. Hi, guys. Uh, thank you guys for having me on the show. I um, just want to go right into it here. We got a question from Club Zanata, and that is journaling between inventory asset accounts from Todd here. In Zoho Books, any insight on transferring a balance from one inventory asset account to another? We currently have two accounts, inventory distributor owned and inventory client owned. They are both assets, stock accounts and books, but there's no native way to journal or adjust between accounts. Zoho supports that the only way is to undo all the transactions, deactivate the items, create new items and recreate the documents. Hoping someone has a creative idea besides redoing all of our transactions. So Todd, yes, uh, Zoho support is correct. Um, your item can only be associated to one uh, stock asset account at a time. So what you would need to do is create a second set of items. Um, transferring the item uh, back and forth using a journal entry, that is a locked account, as I mentioned as well. So you're not allowed to create journal entries for that. Uh, one way around that could be inventory um, adjustments, where you adjust out the one um, item and it increased the item on the other side. Um, so that way, at least your cost of goods sold are being kept together. For other businesses that may have this where they're holding um, items on consignment, um, that's where it gets a little bit more tricky because those consignment items most likely don't have an inventory asset value for your company, but they might have a uh, inventory number um, that you need to sell those items on a website. So with those same thing, you would just want to create a secondary item. Um, but for those, you'd want to make sure that the cost of goods sold on those items was set to zero. Um, that way, like I said, you won't create a uh, false inflated inventory on your system, but you're still able to then keep track of the items that you are selling. Um, if you'd like to get more information or have a follow-up, uh, please go ahead and you can comment in your Club Z post or uh, send me an email directly at 
john at zanata.com. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I would have said. For the record, for the record, that's what I would have said. Uh, same answer. I agree with John. Exactly. I think you did it right. That was, by the way, John Oda, who is our director of finance here. So, John, thanks so much for helping us out with that one. And let's move on to our next question. So this question uh, comes from Mark and uh, or a Club Z. And the title of it was Email Autosync from Office 365 to Zoho CRM after Basic Microsoft Basic Auth was disabled. <clears throat> so, a couple of things on this one. Um, it's uh, really there's a couple of things we want to look at here. So, number one, uh, he sent us a link that went with this, and so if we want to go ahead and share my screen and kind of talk to this a little bit. So. Basically, this is not Office 365, so no one should be concerned. Um, this is basically if you are you have a hosted Exchange server um, and you are getting your mail that way. And basically, they've deprecated basic authentication for this. So we did a lot of searching around on this because evidently, I can't believe with all of the clients we had, this has not come up before, but it hasn't. Um, and it turns out that Microsoft has, uh, not Microsoft, Zoho has addressed this with a... Uh, little marketplace application called Microsoft Exchange for Zoho CRM. Now, theoretically, this fixes the problem. Um, and if I go to ratings and reviews, I say theoretically, uh, this person gave five stars. I don't know why, maybe because they did fixed it. Ah, it was fixed and works well. So this was actually on January 16th, paid, paid for it, downloaded it, did not work. Uh, and then they came back, uh, Zoho came in and evidently fixed it. Uh, back in 2022, when the deprecation started, uh, you can see some other people had issues, but it looks like it's currently working. The odd thing about this is that uh, this is actually a paid Zoho plugin. So if you got one to 50 users, it's going to cost you uh, $25 a month or $240 a year. If you've got one to 100 users, it's going to be $50 a month or $480 a year. And if you have a uh, more than 100 users, you're going to need to buy the unlimited edition, which is $99 a month or $950.40. That $0.40 cents is very important um, per year if you, are, uh, if, if you are going to get this plug-in. And it appears to be the only workaround for this. So um, I would suggest that if that's what you, uh, if that's what you need, you can try this. Um, you know, Try it for a month, and if it works, you can always upgrade it from there. Yeah. But uh, interesting, guys, that's kind of the first marketplace application from Zoho I've ever seen that had a fee associated with it. Most of them yeah, are it's free. Kind of rare. Just, it is kind of rare. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's only going to get harder and harder to connect, uh, you know, some of those like server based systems into really any CRM as time goes on. Um, but yeah, it's, nice it's rare, about rare that they're charging for it. I know. Yeah, a little odd. The nice thing about the plugin I notice is that it actually handles um, calendars as well. It does. Uh, I'm looking at what it says here. It is uh, synchronization between uh, updates, emails, tasks, and contacts, um, as well as your calendar. So, uh, yeah, tasks, contacts, e emails, tasks, calendar events seamlessly. That's something you don't really get on Office 365. You still have to create that separate Zoho calendar box for Office 365. So that becomes a little little bit of a problem. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure, uh, you know, not sure that that's a good answer, but it looks like, Mark, if you want to, you can try out that plugin. Just go over to the marketplace and go ahead and search for my Microsoft Exchange for Zoho CRM. All righty, let us get on into the next question here. This one is from Rich. Uh, look like he asked it over at Club Zanata, actually in the Q&A for Azaz. Thank you for that. Um, so question was, is there a way to move people from contacts to leads? I did an import and all 12,000 people went into contacts. I have done this before as well. Um, I think everybody has done this, imported something into the wrong module. Um, <laughs> Honestly, I was thinking here, guys, like I was thinking about some fancy footwork, right? Like you could figure out who they were and then write a function that would like move them over and delete them. Honestly, though, simplest answer here, filter on created time at when you did this import, delete them all and do it again in the leads. I mean, it seems like that would probably be 
you know, not to overcomplicate it. Sometimes, you know, our minds are going to go to cool functions we could write and everything. But uh, in this case, if you've still got them in that spreadsheet, then uh, just, I would say, delete them. Make sure if you created any accounts, if anything was mapped to that account name field, it could have created accounts. So take that into consideration as well. You might need to delete those. Um, but yeah, I mean, Occam's razor here, guys, is that just like the simplest way to get this done? It could be a little too simple. I know sometimes uh, when you do an import, if you are doing import to update, you will not have the option to undo that import. So as long as it's only adding con adding contacts, uh, you can undo it. And I think you have, is it 14 days to undo or seven to 14 yeah. days? I, I forget what the time yeah, frame I mean, is. If you're outside um, the window to But as long as you're it, just make... adding, then you can undo it. So hopefully that's the case. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. and, and to find that undo, it's basically settings, data administration. You click on import, and then you click on import history, and your entire import history will be there. And you can just yeah back it out. And if you are yeah. outside the but window, you tell me, you I didn't know that. It. If you actually import an update, it won't work? Nope. Yeah. Only for yeah. adding. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Well, hopefully that's the case. We got this answer to you in time, Rich. <laughs> if go not, ahead make custom view. Make custom view on when it was created, and you can just delete them all that way. True. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next question. So uh, Manav asked a question in Club Z. Well, Azaz channel on Club Z. Uh, he asks, uh, I, "I import leads from online databases. While importing, I make a check. I make a check by company name to find duplicates. But Zoho CRM only checks in the leads module." When my sales team starts calling, they recognize existing accounts imported as leads. So is there a way to check duplicate records across other modules such as contacts? Um, so there's really only probably one answer. It, you, you could get fancy with some other solutions, but I think the best solution is probably just to write a custom function that's checking based on the company name. Now, a company name might not always be totally unique. So finding another unique value like uh, their website or maybe you have a company uh, EIN number that you could use to do a unique check based on. Uh, then if you run that function on create, then you could search and find any of those accounts that match. And if you find any, just auto convert that lead. Uh, that's probably the easiest solution. You could also... You could also theoretically like have a unique value on a company name or a, maybe the website is a unique value. So it just prevents that record from being created. Uh, but there's cases where you still want to create that uh, lead and just add them as a contact associated to that same company. So it depends on how you want the record to end up inside the contacts and accounts module, but likely a custom function is going to be needed. Uh, to to prevent duplicates, and the problem is Zoho treats that account name slash company name very. I mean, if you had Zenata in there, and it was a capital Z, and then you have someone put in Zenata, and it was all lowercase, it's not going to catch that. It's going to be two separate uh, companies. We don't all so yeah. you see that oftentimes when it's you know an incorporated or an LLC. Sometimes people put a comma. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they type they capitalize INC. Sometimes they don't. And this leads to all sorts of duplicates like that. And you can always go into your, you know, module and sort those out by do, doing some deduping and, you know, it'll, it'll give you best cases there, but, uh, it, okay. there, there's nothing easy for that. And other than what Josh is talking about and writing some code to check it. Cause when we write like a Duluth script to check that, do we do like, uh, you know, I know we've done some things like most, it's the same name, even though it's lowercase or it's most likely the same name, um, could do that kind of checking Ignore as well, case. right? Yeah, ignore case. A lot of the times you want to get a website, that's kind of the real solve is fix the pipeline, yeah. right? And Josh, you kind of mentioned that like EIN for certain industries, they're going to have that from their lead list. But if you can start grabbing website because, you know, or even like one thing that we've done in the past is um, if you get an email on the lead, you can get the domain yeah. out of the email with a script pretty easily and then search for contacts that have that same domain. Um, okay. because yeah, like Brett's mentioning, like company name is, is just dangerous. Are we Zanata? Are we Zanata consulting? Are we Zanata consulting LLC? Um, did I do a typo? So yeah, honestly, like email domain, EIN website, those are better things to try to use there to, um, to do this search. 
but you would need the script like Josh is saying. All right, our next question uh, comes from Rich, uh, who asked this over on Club Zanata. What is the best practice or code to force entry of phone numbers in standard formats, uh, such as plus one, blah, 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 the parentheses with the area code, and then the three numbers, and then the dash and the four numbers? I'm sure there's probably technical terms for each of those little bits, right? Like the three numbers are probably called like like an anterior number or something, and then a posterior number. In any case, if we do pull in country codes, it looks like we can use parse phone number to help. And then uh, Rich references uh, one of Zoho's uh, AI tools inside of Deluge, uh, zoho.ai.parse phone number. Um, well, so when it comes to, this is something that we've dealt with a lot, is uh, formatting of uh, phone numbers. Because sometimes... Uh, in particular, if you're using, say, some kind of extension for either your telephony or maybe SMS, you might need to have all of your phone numbers uh, formatted in a specific way. Uh, so I've got pulled up uh, right now uh, in one of our test CRMs, a little fake lead here, uh, that they have their phone number. And currently, uh, it's got you know some dashes, but if I just want all of my numbers to look the same, the easiest thing is just getting rid of any special characters and just putting in numbers because the CRM normally does a pretty good job of just doing the standard area code and then uh, the other parts of the number there. If you want to strip all of the special characters uh, to just get the number of a phone number, then uh, this is my go-to little deluge trick. So there's not, there isn't a get numbers function inside of deluge. But there is a get all letters and numbers, and then there's a get rid of all letters. So you do this get alphanumeric, so that gets that gets rid of any special characters and just gets you letters and numbers, and then remove all alpha, you get rid of any letters, boom, you're left with numbers. Uh, and so you could put this in a workflow rule or a client script, uh, and then that will at least keep your numbers uh, formatted consistently, at least as far as Zoho automatically formats them. Uh, you could also use this, though, that even if you wanted to do some, uh, you know, very specific formatting, you could uh, still just take this just numbers, and now you know you've just got raw numbers that you're dealing with, and then, you know, get, say, the first three digits, and then put them inside of parentheses, and then uh, you can check if the number starts with the country code uh, that you have established. Uh but yeah, so all in all, I would say that I think you can accomplish uh, whatever it is that you're looking to do here with just some uh, a few lines of code here rather than uh, trying to finagle with the Zoho AI tool there. Um, at least that's been that's been my opinion. I don't know. I don't know if you guys have uh, played around much with it before. Yeah, I haven't touched most of the AI tools. Yeah, but I mean, the thing I is, around is with uh, a few of them. Yeah, but not the phone numbers one. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those things where the way you showed it, Greg, is definitely going to work. You know, like it's definitely going to get you that outcome just like perfectly. And then Zoho will, you know, do the UI format so it looks good. Where you feed it into okay. the AI tool, it'd be interesting. I mean, maybe try it, right? Like have one of them write to the main field and have the other write to another. Right. And, and kind of just see if they're different and let us know, Rich, because I'm kind of curious too. like what is because if that worked really well, I mean, darn, it'd be pretty sweet. Right. If it could just do that. Um, but I don't know yeah, if you just Zoho never... needs an entire AI tool for this. I mean, that was just a one line code. I don't know if there's much AI involved in, <laughs> in that script, <laughs> but maybe Zoho's doing something else on their back end. No, I yeah. think the AI tool calls Greg's script. And runs it is probably what <laughs> yeah, right. for the I mean, you know, calls calls Greg Back directly. Backdoors into the Zenato CRM. <laughs> so uh, Tomas asked over here on it looks like actually a question on our previous Azaz video. Um, I wanted to know if there's any way to add a contact to multiple accounts. Uh, I know that this can be done through multi lookup fields. Uh, but you don't get the roll-up features that contacts usually get when related to accounts, kind of talking about notes, activities, um, all those different records. Is there any workaround for this? Does Zoho have any plans to roll out this feature? Uh, I believe every other CRM on the market has this. I don't know why Zoho doesn't. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it is something that we do get a decent amount of requests for. I don't know that they have any plans to support it as of right now. Um, I know there are some serums that do it, some that don't kind of across the market, like a really nice kind of multi-account roll up. Um, but yeah, unless you guys have heard differently, I don't think it's on a roadmap as of right now, at least that I'm aware of. No, it would be so oh, nice yeah. though. It would, no, I think it if, would be so if you nice. wanted any sort of roll ups like that, a custom XML list is probably needed. Um, yeah, you have the tools in the toolbox, right? Like you could, yeah. if you had that linking module, um, looks like Josh was taken by the void here. If you had that <laughs> linking module, um, you know, the, the multi lookup field and you had to create a linking record between, um, you could, like Josh mentioned there, have an XML related list that actually displays all that stuff properly. All right. I'm back. Welcome back. I think we rounded that one out. All righty. Next question here. I think this is for me as well. Back to back. Uh, so this is a question from Jeremy. He asked it in response to our YouTube video, The Ultimate Guide to Configuring and Optimizing Zoho Inventory, recorded in 2023. Uh, that's a good one. Check it out if you need any help with inventory. Uh, do you know if when we are setting up the Amazon integration to Zoho Inventory, so doing FBA almost exclusively for fulfillment, uh, do we need to enable sales tax when setting it up? Uh, Zoho wants to you to make a selection on taxes before the integration. Uh, thankfully, Amazon actually handles the sales tax with their kind of side of the house, the marketplace tax facilitator. Um, so it's included with orders. They don't want it uh, coming in and doing anything wonky with their accounting or accounting for it as part of the sale of goods itself. So it really depends, Jeremy, with just how that data is piping in in the integration. Um, I don't know, Josh, it should be similar to the Shopify integration, I would imagine. So maybe we could speak to that just a little bit. Um, yeah. So as far as Shopify goes, whenever an order comes through, it's just a, an extra adjustment at the bottom of the invoice. I don't think you can see sales tax on a line item basis. Uh, as, yeah. as long as with, with the Shopify integration, it's just summed up at the bottom of the invoice. Um, and it still it still shows up inside of your P and Ls uh, and tax reports, um, so that shouldn't be an issue. And I'm assuming it's the same with the Amazon Marketplace. The Amazon, yeah, got it. So it sounds like Jeremy you should be good to go. Always good to run a test. I'd say plug it in, right? Like let it run first. Um, Brett, you had something you want to chime in? Yeah, I thought Tyler on a couple CRM Zen shows ago we checked it so you could have an item where you were ignored sales tax. I thought they came up with that setting. So you would yeah, have I mean, a, a different SKU sitting over at Amazon in one of their warehouses. And then that would then when Zoho created the invoice, it would ignore the sales tax field. I'm I'm positive we discussed this a few weeks ago on the CRM Zen show that Zoho had kind of it, just it, added it, that. Let me see it how does quick exist. I am if I can get it. It does exist. Like you can certainly ignore sales tax on an item, but when that's coming through as w inside of an integration uh, through just Shopify, I'm taking as an, a reference, it's not really doing it on a line item basis. It's at the order basis. So it's whatever was charged in sales tax at sh on Shopify or on Amazon FBA. It's going to show that as an adjustment uh, on the invoice itself. Alrighty, Jeremy. Hopefully, that was helpful. Well, the next question comes from uh, Right Price Real Estate Group, and this was on our YouTube channel. Using layout rules, blueprints, and workflow rules in Zoho CRM for automation, and uh, he's asking a question: As the contact starts moving through the system, is there a way to identify if the client is on a follow-up action plan so they do not get forgotten? We assign our clients to a follow-up campaign immediately, but sometimes agents forget to assign a campaign. Also, can multiple campaigns be assigned, for example, expired listing drip campaign and then the weekly newsletter campaign? Kind of start this one from the bottom up. Um, you can absolutely be assigned to multiple different campaigns, um, you know, setting up your segments. And we've got some great great new tutorials on Zo setting integrating Zoho CRM with Zoho campaigns. And basically, uh, you know, combining, you know, and, and setting up your various segments so that you can have those multiple drip campaigns. Just check out our YouTube channel or go to Zanata.com, click on resources. 
then click on campaigns and everything's kind of neatly organized there for you. You won't have to search around too much for it. Um, I guess the next part of that is if, if you're assigning them to campaigns based on CRM fields, then you could run workflows on them guys and have some functions that would check from the lead to the contact if they're in a drip. Um, yeah, but how, how are you going to auto notify on that? I mean, it would have to be based on rules, right? So let's say that, um, there's a rule, a business rule that a lead that comes from a trade show should enter one of three different drips when they're converted to a contact, right? And that, so really kind of gets into those business rules, right? So then in that case, now we have these criteria, lead source, conversion starts the timer, and we can look at that drip emails field, right? So you're thinking kind of like multi-select field, right? Like mailing lists or segments, and you could kind of tick them off. Um, so based on that rule set, we could say, you know, seven days after they become a contact, if none of these three values are in there, email a person, create a task for a person, you know, do whatever needs to be done. Um, yeah, good video to watch on the campaign side. I think, Greg, you actually recorded a while back kind of like setting up tags and workflows and, and how to do it that way. Mm -hmm. That would apply for a field as well. Really all the same types of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's a solvable problem, I think, on both sides there. All right. This one's definitely a question for me here. Josh asks, love the name. Josh asks on uh, a YouTube video, uh, CRM Zen Show episode 247, my neighbor, neighbor Zotoro, just our last episode, actually. Uh, what, does, what does Zenata currently use for project management? And what does that system offer you that Zoho Projects doesn't? I'm glad you asked. So, uh, I'm very proud. Uh, I've built out a Zoho Creator application that manages all of our Zenata operations. Um, the reason why we're using Creator, and we, we've used projects in the past. We actually started out using uh, Zoho Connect, using their Kanban boards for task management. And it works, uh, but as we scaled and we had more projects, it got a little uh, overbearing. And then we wanted to link those projects with clients. So then we moved to projects. And projects worked out pretty well. Um, it, it was a really nice solution, but it wasn't exactly what we what fit our processes. And we had very specific needs for logging hours and tracking those on the account. Uh, but then as we scaled even further, we had other in needs for HR purposes and social channels and uh, managing a client portal. So there, there was a bunch of other needs uh, we need it for project management and managing our interactions with our clients. Uh, so we built out a creator application, which does everything. So it's a one-stop shop for uh, all of our operations uh, built out in creator, manages project management, like I said, some HR tools like our uh, org charts, uh, our employee profiles, creating signatures, which you wouldn't think would be so challenging. Uh, but actually generating the signatures and profiles. Um, we have other tools in here, such as social channels, which are basically just iframed into the platform uh, through some of our other uh, 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 applications we use. And then we also have leave requests and uh, uh, so many other things that we can just bake into just one nice application. So to answer your question, long story short, uh, creator because we have ultimate flexibility and we can really customize it uh, exactly how I need. And each stakeholder has a different view and what permissions that they have uh, is a little bit different. Yeah. So uh, yeah. a developer and, will and log in and they'll see something different. And Josh isn't exaggerating. Um, he's built an amazing application that basically runs the business. I mean, and there's so much to it. I mean, we need to know bench time for our developers, you know, who's busy, who's not. We need people to, it, it might not even seem like they're overwhelmed, but people can check in at the beginning of the day and say, I'm, I'm maxed. <laughs> you know, don't give me anything if you want to see it today. I mean, and because of the way it's built, um, you know, by the way, Zoho has portals and the ZBrains portal is amazing. As a matter of fact, on Thursday of this week, I'm doing another webinar with John Mark because ZBrains portal works 99% of the time. Fantastic for everybody. But we needed a lot of extra stuff and a lot of custom stuff. <laughs> Um, if you don't, back to kind of your question, Zoho Projects is great. I think you'll just be, you'll yeah. be fine with it. You won't have an issue. Man, it depends how you work, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. It depends how you work. I mean, I know, Brad, I've, I've stolen this uh, line from you when talking to prospects and clients that like with project management tools, there's not like a right answer, right? It's like, well, how do you manage projects? Right. Zoho projects, <laughs> if you run things off of Gantt charts, if that's your thing, right, the way your business works, you need to make a six month plan and follow that plan and have dependent tasks. Zoho projects is going to be perfect for you. Right. Uh -huh. uh, if you work in sprints, it's probably not, probably not going to be perfect for you. Um, so it's, right. it's really just about how you do things. There's not always like a perfectly right solution for everyone. Um, and, yep. you know, for us, obviously, Josh, took the path of just doing it all ourselves or himself really inside a creator. And that worked for us. Uh, but you got to find yeah. what's going to work for you. And the okay. thing with Zoho, so many options, as Josh mentioned, you know, we started off with Zoho connect, which you would never think in a million years you could manage products projects from, but it's probably one of the best Kanban boards that Zoho offers because you actually can move something to a column and actually take actions on that in there. So that's fantastic. You know, and a lot of people like just kind of the straight up spreadsheet view. I mean, Smartsheets is successful because that is a view that works for a lot of people. Tyler, when we first met, you were using something similar to Smartsheets. I can't remember what it was called, but it was a, Air another table. one. That, Airtable, Air yeah. Airtable. Um, yeah. Simpler than Smartsheets, so, but a lot nicer front end, yeah. Yeah. And, and maybe, and, and you mentioned, you know, if you want to work in sprints, Zoho Sprints, it's agile development. That may be the thing that works for you. So... And I'll tell you what, a lot of times we talk to clients and it's like, man, your CRM is going to do it just fine. I mean, you can, sometimes it's not that complicated. You can just automatically assign tasks in the CRM. You can have dependencies when this task was closed, buy off another task, you know, a week after this task is finished, do another task. I mean, there's a lot you can automate inside the CRM and keep everything there as well. So yeah, yeah I mean, when I first you started, uh, all of our logging of time was done directly in the CRM. I, uh, you yeah, know, it was always uh, you Josh, the CRM. You hate that. That was yeah, that was actually the origin of the whole creator app back in the day. Was because Josh hated manually typing that stuff in so much that he built a simple yeah. calendar tool in Creator to log his hours against a CRM record. Um, yeah. And what three years later, now we it is like, what it is. Wait, we all want that though. Can you give that <laughs> to all of us? Even Everyone was still using projects and I built out our entire task management inside of the portal or inside of our creator app. Everyone was using projects, but I had a two-way integration to our creator app and I was the only one using creator and everyone's like, oh, I want to try that too. I'm like, okay, move over here. You're all good to go. <laughs> all right. Next one here. Another creator question. Lars from, uh, or he posted a question in uh, Club Z. Yes. Hello. So I've seen a few of your uh, tutorials on Zoho Creator. However, I still don't fully understand how I can use it. Could you please demo an existing application and its benefits? I'm less interested in how to make it work, but would like to understand various use cases. So I unfortunately, I don't have any applications I can demo. There's tons of pre-built applications you can template inside of Creator to uh, get a good understanding of what different use cases are. But really, you have to think of it as an auxiliary application to your business. Uh, if you're going to use, if it's for sales, go into the CRM and use the CRM as your uh, leads, contacts, uh, deals. That's what it's best for. Uh, if you need something that doesn't fit in a standard Zoho app, then consider using a creator app. And some some things you can think of is... Uh, I have a list here. So a few reasons to explore a, a creator app or form. And it doesn't have to be an entire app. Maybe it's just a one public form that you have accessible uh, to the public for filling out information and that pushes into uh, CRM or Zoho Books or something like that. Uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of different reasons uh, why I use creator, but the main reason is its flexibility. Uh, you can really do anything. Uh, I say anything loosely, but you really can do a lot inside a creator. Uh, if you get fancy enough with HTML and CSS and even Node.js. Um, but you let's know, say uh, Josh, you, I was going to say, you got, you got me thinking about uh, one of my use cases of what I used creator for. Uh, I'm sure all of you have been in this situation before. You're, uh, you're a sushi nut. You know, you like to go eat sushi, but then when you're, as you're ordering it, you find yourself going, oh man, I just, I want to make sure that I have like a good spread 
of like the different kinds of fish or things like that that I'm ordering. So I built a, an app in Creator where I loaded it up with uh, information on sushi rolls from my local favorite sushi place and what fish is in each rolls and then set up some workflows on the back end so that I would say, okay, I've ordered this roll and this roll. So tell me what rolls should I order to get me the most fish that I haven't <laughs> had yet? So I, think, yeah, so I think you can definitely use the term anything is possible in creator. <laughs> it's something like that. You probably won't want to build inside a standard CRM. You don't need a, a sushi builder in your CRM, but if it's a core feature of your business, you need that tool somewhere and where better than creator. Uh, the biggest reason why you go to creator is the complex workflows and the layout rules and validation rules you can do on input of a field. Uh, there's just so much you can control on the data coming in and preventing bad data, but then also controlling the path of a user. Uh, so really, yeah, main reasons would be if you have a complex workflow, a very specific workflow that falls outside of a normal Zoho app, think about creator. Maybe you have a, uh, you have a business that has a bunch of external employees that you don't really want to add to Zoho one, but you still want them to access some information. Uh, and so you could do uh, like a CRM portal to give them access to limited information, or you could add them as a portal user in a creator app. Uh, and now you can kind of play around with your users and permissions and what they have access to. So that really depends on what you're doing in creator and if it's set up for that, but I've made a lot of applications. Let's say it's like a field management application where you have agents in the field that are doing a very specific task, uh, giving them a application uh, that is both mobile friendly, tablet friendly, and optimized for those different, uh, use cases. Um, Creator's been a, a great use case. Hope that answers your question, Mars. <laughs> hey, our next question comes from after watching uh, YouTube Zoho People Full Product Tutorial 2021. Siva Kumar asks, can you tell me how to create an employee tree in Zoho People? Why, yes, I can. Um, it's a fairly straightforward process um, if you're using Zoho People. Um, what you're going to want to do, and I've got a little screen share and I'll show it for you here is, um, and this is just, I, this is just basically the knowledge base for Zoho people, but this is what it looks like. And I wanted to show you this. If you go in and you click on organization and you click on organization tree, this is what the tree looks like. So it's not really kind of what a lot of people are looking for in an org chart but it does give you this and you can kind of blow them out and kind of go through and look at each one. So you can see this person has seven and there are their seven direct reports. And this person has 16. If you were to click on them, it will show you the 16 direct reports. And then there might be numbers to these other people indicating that they have, and you can kind of blow it out, but you can't get that beautiful org tree that you're kind of looking for inside of Zoho people that sub. And to set this up, you're really just in the same under organization. You're going to click on employees and you're just going to have all your employees and you just need to make sure you've got them, the department they're in and who they're reporting to. And once you've done that, that's, that's kind of it. I would imagine guys that there's a way to maybe do an export and put this into something, maybe you do a creator app to create that beautiful tree. Um, but other than this, do you guys know of anything else that would work for this? I have the role structure inside of the CRM you could do, but that affects a lot of permissions things. Yeah. I, I wouldn't recommend that. I think people is the go-to place or using another float chart builder like lucid chart, honestly yeah. is, but at the end of yeah. the day though, probably use what Brett showed you. Cause there's, you want to do it in there. Cause I'm sure it affects the way the app is going to work. So even if it's a little yeah. less pretty, it it does represent that same data, right? The hierarchy of who reports to who and and how things should go. So yeah, I think Brad, that's, that's if probably you're looking for that classic that classic yeah. top down word chart, yeah. you're gonna need to get Lucid Chart. You could you could use that to build out a nice little Lucid Chart, or you know, um, almost every spreadsheet software today has the ability to do that, and almost every PowerPoint 
presentation today has the ability to build those out. Um, but that's what you're going to get inside of Zoho People. All right. And our uh, last question for this week uh, comes from uh, Club Zanata. And this comes from uh, one of our Club Zanata superstars, Elizabeth Clark, uh, which uh, if you guys have watched the CRM Zen show, uh, you know that uh, Elizabeth is uh, one of the one of those with a rare honor of her code shares being featured in the CRM Zen show alongside our own Zanata developers. So obviously we're taking very close note of this question. Elizabeth asks, I'm building an integration with our own e-commerce website. When adding a shipping address, I run into a code 15 error. Please ensure that the shipping address has less than 100 characters. Am I going to need to waste an API call creating the address and use the address underscore ID instead? So uh, for a little bit of context, uh, what Emma was referring to is uh, in Zoho Books and the Zoho Finance Suite, addresses are saved as a separate entity that is then linked to a customer or a contact person. Uh, instead of it existing, you know, in the CRM, your address are just a bunch of fields on your contact record. Uh, but because especially in the case of when you're dealing with financials and especially if you're doing any kind of shipment or fulfillment, then a given customer could have, you know, several different addresses associated to them, you know, maybe there's, uh, you know, one address where you send, you know, uh, bills or invoices, and then they have, you know, a separate address for uh, shipping, uh, and you may have different warehouses that they need to ship to or something like that. So uh, the short answer to Elizabeth's question is that, uh, unfortunately, yes, you are going to need to uh, spend an API credit uh, creating and or updating that uh, address record and then connecting it to your sales order or invoice creation map uh, rather than hard coding in that uh, that address. Um, or at least that's, I found that that's the most, uh, most reliable way. You know, again, it's that thing of what's going to work and then what's going to always work. So this is the one that's going to always work. And uh, actually, if you want to bring up uh, my screen, uh, I have uh, Elizabeth's question here in Club Z. And you won't believe it, but one of our devs, Hector Gonzalez, he already beat me to answering this question five days ago, <laughs> uh, where he uh, mentions the same thing. Uh, fortunately, we can't increase that character limit that uh, she's running into. So you have to create that uh, that address record. And uh, Hector actually includes in the post here uh, how you could create that record. So you you have you create your address map. In this case, uh, we're obviously said to a very important individual at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, uh, west, <laughs> in west wing up to the West Wing in Washington D.C. Uh, then there's a specific uh, API call that you need to make to create that address and passing in that address as your uh, parameters. Then you'll get it back and inside of the object that gets returned, uh, you can get something called address info and then inside of there, you have your address ID. Then after you finish mapping all your line items, when you're actually creating your sales order, then you just have to put in this key value pair of shipping underscore address underscore ID, and then that ID that you got from this API call from earlier. Uh, and then there you go. You'll be able to have uh, your uh, address uh, saved on there. And then the other nice thing is that then you can actually... Uh, another thing that I might add to this function uh, is actually pulling what are the list of current addresses already on a given customer record. And you could search through and then just reuse uh, the address if it already has been put in there. And then you won't have to recreate it necessarily every time. You can just uh, reuse the address ID um, 
uh, for any future orders. And uh, yes. Hector goes on, he suggests of uh, perhaps creating a uh, custom multi-line field that you can put in for the shipping address. Uh, but uh, but honestly, this is this is the way you want to go because this is how this is how books wants to structure its address information. Uh, so to get the most uh, out of it and to make it as easy as possible for you know any of your inventory templates, you know those emails or PDFs that get sent out. Uh, you're going to want to use this system. Yeah, I think it's also important to do that check on current addresses because you don't want to create a bunch of duplicates. So I I liked your suggestion of finding the existing ones and checking there, but uh, you also have to be careful with the attention line too because you might have the same address but a different attention. Um, Yeah. Maybe it's going to a different person, so... Yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah. So like I, you know, um, they, I've written the script similar to uh, this before, where basically I just said, "I want you to check, and if every single, if every, you know, I, I, ha- I've built my shipping address map. If I find an address where every single line is exactly the same, <laughs> use that one. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and make a new one. So you might have some, you know, semi duplicates because maybe you have a couple of different attentions." Uh, like Josh mentioned, but uh, but yeah, perfect, fantastic. All right, guys. Well, that is going to wrap up another amazing edition of Azaz. If you would like to get a hold of us and ask us a question directly, get on the phone with us. Have a nice little Zoom conference where you could like, oh my God, you're just like you are on TV, except meaner. You can uh, just head over to Zanata.com and click on Book a Meeting. That's if you get great numbers. On the website is where you'll also find complete episodes of our podcast, The CRM Zen Show, where we cover all the news in the world of Zoho every single week. Uh, If you want that news delivered straight to your inbox every Monday, be sure to subscribe to our newsletter and we will take care of that for you. Um, And then as always, uh, we do appreciate if you can like and subscribe here on YouTube and follow us on your favorite choice of podcast app. Uh, We'd love to see you next time. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week for the next issue of Azaz. Adios, everybody. Have a great uh, week. And actually, we're very nice when you talk to us. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Yeah, you sometimes Tyler doesn't comb his hair or shower, but other than that, it's fine. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs>